God, we worship you, we adore you, we say thank you for January, thank you for February, thank you for March, thank you for April, thank you for May, thank you for June, thank you for July, thank you for August, thank you for September. And now, thank you for October. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. It takes a miracle to sleep and wake up. It is of your mercy that we have not been consumed. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for 62 years of existence. Thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you will do in the future. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we commit all our rulers into your hands. From the presidents to the cabinet, our governors, their cabinets, our traditional rulers, all those who are in authority over us. Father, please bless them. Give them wisdom. Give them understanding. Anoint them. Guide them aright. For the sake of those of us who are under them, please guide them aright. And Lord God Almighty, you are the burden bearer. As they are carrying the burdens of our nation, carry their own burdens too. And please, Lord God Almighty, this month, like never before, favor all of us. As for your children who have been faithful in the payment of their tithes and the giving of their offerings, this month, embarrass them with your blessings. Let it be well with them. Don't let them lack. Open new doors unto all of us. And we pray, Lord God Almighty, that this month will be a very successful month for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. I shake hands with one or two people and say, it will be well with you in Jesus' name. And then you may please be seated. God bless you. <laughs> I've been asked to speak on perfect peace in the land. And I will be taking my text from Second Chronicles chapter 7. From verse 13 to 14. Second Chronicles 7. 13 to 14. The Almighty God is the one speaking here. And he says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God said, if I shut up heaven, 
that there be no rain. That tells you one thing straight away. God is the controller of rainfall. I, I think the Yoruba one is a bit too loud. So you check there. He said, if I command the locusts to devour the land, locusts does not mean ordinary insects. Uh, there are areas in Nigeria today where people are afraid to even go to the farm. And the action of the locusts is to make sure that there will be no food. So those forces that will not allow the farmer to go and farm, they are locusts. Or if I send pestilence among my people, you know what is called pestilence? When you consider something like coronavirus, then you know what a pestilence is. God said if this should happen, and my people, Who are called by my name. Christians are called by the name of Christ. If these people shall humble themselves and pray, did they ask the whole country to pray? He said, My people called by my name. If they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then uh, will I hear from heaven and we forgive their sins and we heal their land. There's trouble in any land. The fault belongs to Christians. If we do our duty, God will heal our land. That's why you need to get ready. Because very soon I'll be calling on you, before the end of the year, to join me in fasting and praying. Very, very special time of prayer. When the time draws near, I will let you know and I will give you the details. But then, the man in charge at the headquarters here said, today they want me to talk on perfect peace in the land. So let's start by saying, what exactly is peace? Somebody may say, peace is the absence of war. I'll be correct. Second Samuel chapter 10, from verse 1 to 19. Second Samuel 10, from verse 1 to 19. Tells us of a time when the enemies of Israel discovered that each time they came against them, they were defeated. So they decided, no more war. I pray that all the enemies of Nigeria will be defeated yeah. so that we can have peace. Another definition of peace, of course, is the absence of storm. Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. Jesus Christ and his disciples were in a boat. And then Jesus was sleeping, and there arose a storm. They woke up Jesus Christ and uh, spoke a word, peace be still, and everything became quiet. I pray today that the control of storms will speak peace to our nation. Then, what do we mean by perfect peace? For us to understand, well, of course, we know that perfect means without 
blemish. For us to be able to understand the word or the, the phrase perfect peace, we need to know that there is something called a truce. A truce means we are still fighting. But we want to suspend the fight. For one reason or the other. Maybe we want to celebrate Christmas. We all of us want to enjoy Christmas. Side one wants to enjoy, side two wants to enjoy. So we say, all right, for the next three days, we enter into truth. We are not going to fight. So a truce means the battle is not over. We just want (laughs) peace for a while. And you can find examples in the Bible when uh, King Saul was after David, wanting to kill him. On more than one occasion, David had an opportunity to kill him, and he spared him. And when he heard that, ah, you cut, you got as close to me as to cut off the hem of my garment, and you didn't kill me. Ah, you must be a very good boy. Okay, no more problem. <laughs> but uh, a couple of days later, it was after him. Uh, when we talk about a truce, maybe a very good illustration would be a woman in labor. You see a woman in labor, the pain will come when the contraction begins. Come hard. Many a times you hear the woman screaming and then all of a sudden the contraction will ease to let her get uh, some strength back. But the battle is not over. <laughs> because as she's relaxing, and the contraction comes again as a truce. You have a little bit of it until that fellow inside will come out. I'm praying for someone today who has been going through a truce. God will give you peace. Perfect, perfect peace means permanent peace. Not a truce. In First Kings chapter 4, from verse 21 to 25, First Kings chapter 4, 21 to 25, throughout the reign of Solomon, there was peace all around. All the time Solomon was king, he did not fight a single war. Uh, you know, he was a wise fellow. <laughs> when he discovered that there is a king who could be interested in his kingdom, he went and married the daughter. So he, that's, that's how he ended up with uh, not too many wives. Just about, uh, by the time you had the, the wives and the concubines, everything, total 1,000. <coughs> it wasn't sex so much that he was interested in. It was peace. So all round about, anyone who could ever think of fighting him, he made an in-law. <laughs> Solo. Solo is a very, very interesting fellow. Permanent peace throughout his reign. May I decree to someone here today that for the rest of your life you will know permanent peace. But before we say one or two about permanent peace in the life, because I'm sure when they were thinking of this topic, they have a nation in mind. Do you know that uh, 
A nation is made up of individuals. And it is possible for a nation to be at war. And yet somebody can be in permanent peace. Like a child. It doesn't matter to the child whether it is rainy or there was storm or because they don't even know what's going on anyway, so they just enjoy peace. While we are thinking of peace for the land, maybe we should think about peace for you. Because a nation is made up of individuals. I uh, was talking to my children a couple of days ago. Some people don't know that bread will increase in price twice in a week. They don't know why they don't buy bread. They just eat. <laughs> so let's talk about you. When we talk about storms, storms are in categories. There is physical storm. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, there was a woman that the Bible said had an issue of blood 12 years. In gatherings, we all look fine, well dressed. It is the one whose fire is, who, who fire is burning inside, who will know fire is burning him. If the fellow next to you were to tell you some of the things he's going through physically, uh, you may want to relocate. Someone may be in a gathering where everybody, everything seems to be going fine, and the fellow knows that he has cancer. That fellow is in, war, in a war. The woman with the issue of blood, nobody knew what was going on. She wasn't telling anyone that she was fighting a war until she came in contact with the Prince of Peace. And then she knew peace. Every one of you with any form of sickness or disease, in the name of the Prince of Peace, be healed in Jesus' name. Then there could be a storm, financial. Not everybody who is well dressed is at peace financially. Some of the big people you see. The reason some of them can't sleep is because uh, they have problems with their banker. In Second Kings chapter four, from verse one to seven, Second Kings four, verse one to seven, the Bible tells us the story of a widow who was destitute, and the creditors came and said, "If you don't pay by tomorrow, we will sell your two sons." Every day you the sword sister because she happened to be the widow of a son of prophets. Sister, how are you? All this way. Praise the Lord. What's everything, sister? Oh the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But the day the creditors came and they said, you don't pay by tomorrow, we sell your children. Sister, oh, now she said, all is not well. She ran to the Almighty God. Within a day, her debts were cleared. And she had enough money to live for the rest of her life. Those of you who are in financial war, the King of Kings himself, we solve that problem today. Yeah. 
And then there are steam, there are storms, Marita. When you read 1 Samuel chapter 1, from verse 1 to 20, 1 Samuel chapter 1, from verse 1 to 20, the Bible talks about a woman, Anna by name. She was barren. The husband had two wives. The other wife was producing children like rabbits. And she made sure she rubbed it in on Hannah. Stupid woman, what are you doing in my husband's house? We're just eating our food. Nothing to show for it. The Bible said the adversary, that's the second woman, begs her soul. She was at home fighting a war. Until one day, she went to Shiloh, and she returned home, not within the game. In the name of the one who called me, I decree to those of you who are fighting battles in your home, peace be still. <laughs> at times, it's not a woman trusting God for the fruit of the womb that is at in trouble. Uh, and if you know the if you know the battle that a barren woman is fighting, you will understand what I mean when I pray for peace. But at times it's not you. It's your son or daughter who is uh, <laughs> under attack. I mean, Find an example in Matthew 15, from 21 to 28. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. The woman who came to Jesus Christ, crying for mercy, said, My daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. It's not the mama that is sick. It's the daughter. You may not have any war physically. You are healthy. You are strong. You may not have any problem financially. If, if you threaten to take your money out of a bank, the manager will catch a cold. But if all is not well, with just one of your children, you are at war. Oh, I, I remember an occasion when I was asked to come and minister to some Eminent people at Ikoyi. When I arrived, because I arrived to time, I didn't know that big people don't uh, don't worry too much about time. So they asked me to wait for the people I'm supposed to come and minister to. So they will put me in the house of the of the hostess for the day, and I. And I sat in a sitting room that is one of five sitting rooms. <laughs> Each one ascending in order of splendor. And I wanted to change my topic. I wanted to change my topic to, oh, that man will praise the Lord. <laughs> But the Lord said, no, don't change the topic. The owner of this house is in trouble. The son is on drugs. I thank God, God intervened. God saved the soul of that son that day. Those of you who are going through fire in your family, in the name that's above every other name, today there will be peace. There are storms mental. Storm mental. If you read Daniel chapter 4, from verse 1 to 34, Daniel 4, 1 to 34, you find a king who became an animal. Uh, talk 
of wealth. He was wealthy. Physically, he wasn't sick. But uh, he became an animal eating grass. I don't want to begin to give examples. But the elders will tell you that madness is in categories. The lowest category of madness is the one you see in the street walking naked. Uh, that one is madness at the lowest level. Because when you see him coming, you know danger is here and you can dodge. They said there is a madness of a higher degree and they call it we realize that is the well dressed madman. Well dressed but mad. And before you know you are dealing with trouble the fellow has come close because he's well dressed, highly intelligent, but well dressed. So you many a times you don't know who you are sitting next to. Uh, but it uh, doesn't matter how mad that fellow is. Today, God will intervene. So I can go on and on and on. Talk about categories of storms. Now, when we talk about perfect peace, we're talking about somebody who has no problem physically, no problem financially, no problem maritally, no problem mentally, no problem spiritually. And in the name that's above every other name, from today onward, your peace will be perfect. An example of that you will find in Second Kings chapter five, from verse one to nineteen. Second Kings five, from verse one to nineteen, it talks about a man called Naaman. He was successful, he was popular, he was rich, but he was a leper. Uh, that fellow had a storm. As popular, as successful, as rich as he was, he couldn't even play with his children because he was a leper. Until one day he came to a man of God and he was cleansed. That's perfect. From that day onward, he just had peace. And when we talk about national, national peace because that's what they meant by peace in the land a whole nation can be in a storm we don't have to look far to find one <laughs> we don't have to look far I mean if a governor cannot go to his farm I feel safe. I mean, and he went with uh, bodyguards. He had to thank God that he could run because the bandits wanted to kill a governor. When we talk of security, a governor should be secure. As young as I am, I remember a time when a KBC is coming. And unless you are one of the very special people, you move out of the way. You don't even want the dress the KBC is wearing to touch you. And those days, so things are different now, thank God. But now, Kidnappers can go to the palace and kidnap a traditional ruler. Yeah, I mean, don't let anybody deceive you. 
we are in a war I mean in 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 1 to 53 1 Samuel 17 from verse 1 to 53 uh, the Bible tells us of a terrorist just one his name was Goliath he terrorized a whole nation for 40 days to just stand up and say any of you who want to fight come uh, just contest between me and you you win my nation will become your slaves we, I win your nation will become our slaves and this fellow was so terrified that after he spoke the bible says soldiers will go to hide for 40 days he terrorized Israel until God raised up one small boy and what had been on for 40 days ended in minutes I would like to decree to my beloved nation Nigeria that what the king cannot do what soldiers cannot handle what uh, whatever whatever cannot, the almighty God will do for us today well so that I don't take too much of your time what do we do to have perfect peace in a nation I've read that one to you Second Kings chapter 7 13 to 14 God said if my people are called by my name will humble themselves and pray He said I will heal their life Pray How? How do we pray? Well Maybe we should spend more time praying for our rulers. Because in 1 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 2, 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 to 2, he said we must pray for the kings so that we can live a peaceable life. Because we know it's easier for us to criticize. They're not doing well. They are not taking care of us. They are, they are about to human beings cannot fight and win. There's certain battles only God can win. Only God. So God said, pray for your rulers. Because in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 Proverbs 29 verse 2 The Bible says hey, When the righteous Are in authority People rejoice so, But when the wicked Bear rule People mourn Pray for your rulers Because for every mistake They make Is the people who will suffer not them uh, <laughs> uh, 2nd Kings chapter 24 from verse 1 to 15 2nd Kings chapter 24 verse 1 to 15 David conducted the censors against the advice of those who know God when he finished the censors God decided now it's my turn. Sent a prophet to go and tell him. Choose between three things as your punishment. He said, ah, I would rather fall into the hand of God than into the hand of him. God said, fine. And then he sent an angel to pay the nation a visit. 70,000 men died in one day. Do you know, not a single fellow died in the palace. 
It was David who made a mistake. It was the innocent people who paid the price. Pray for your rulers. We've spent a lot of time criticizing them. Do your duty. Pray for them. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. The Bible made it clear. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1. Proverbs 21 verse 1. He said the heart of kings are in the hand of God. And like a river of water, he turns their hearts. Pray to God who can turn the hearts of these rulers so that the rulers will do the right thing and then we people who enjoy. So why are we suffering? Because we have not prayed. The fault is ours. Not the rulers. Oh, we are mourning because it must be the wicked in authority. Why don't you pray for the salvation of the souls of those in authority? There is someone who is the savior. There is a God on his throne who can do all things. And I'm praying today. And I pray you will join me in praying. That God will continue to guide our leaders aright. So that they won't make mistakes. And we won't suffer. The other day I was asking. How much is the... uh, Ticket from Lagos to Abuja. And they said 250,000 naira. Eh? It used to be 60 something. What happened? Uh, <laughs> uh, and they told me what happened. Let me tell you one thing. It doesn't matter how much bread is costing, there will be bread in that room. Right or wrong. It doesn't matter how many times the electric grid or whatever they call it collapses, there will be light in that room. If our elders, if our leaders, our rulers make mistakes, who is going to suffer? Uh-huh. If you love yourself, pray for our rulers. Well, I'm close with you because you are the most important fellow in the nation. Do you know you can have peace? In the midst of a storm. Psalm 23 verse 4. Psalm 23 verse 4 says. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? It doesn't matter the storm that may be in a land, in a nation. Just make sure Jesus is with you. And you will enjoy peace. Even in the midst of a storm. And I will just... You know, I've not been telling you stories (laughs) because the issue is very serious. But I will tell you two quick stories. You've heard them before. 
but some of you have not. Storm can come anytime. It's a matter of when, not if. God said it, Isaiah 43, verse 2. He said, when you walk through the fire, it won't burn you. When you walk through the river, the river will not overflow you. He said, because I will be with you. I was going to London. In our beloved uh, Nigeria Airways of blessed memory. We got to Heathrow. And the uh, pilot came, I said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we have a small problem. The tires at the belly of the plane refused to come out. That's what he calls the little problem. <laughs> the, the thing we are going to land with refuses to come out. On that day, by accident, I was traveling first class because somebody bought the ticket. That day I knew that rich people don't want to die. And the money broke out. You know, these people, you know, rich people, you know, the people who, when they smile, when they laugh, you will know that it's a rich man laughing. Uh, they, they are laughed as, hey, hey. they don't laugh like those of us who are common people. When the news came that uh, we, might, we might crash, uh, I saw fear. I mean, people were talking all manners of talk. There was one man who had throughout the journey had been going to the toilet and coming back. He wasn't going to ease himself, but he had a walking stick. The top of the walking stick was diamond. So he wanted to show us the walking stick. This time, he really wanted to go to the toilet. He got up and the hostess said, sit down. So I said, who said so? <laughs> and I will tell you the truth. I was scared. Anointing doesn't drive away the fear of death. So I said, ah, daddy, when I was saying goodbye to my son at the airport yesterday night, you didn't tell me that the last time I would be seeing my son. And then God spoke. You are not going to die, my son. Hey, amen. He said, I want to talk to you. And I know as soon as we land in London, they won't let us talk. They, they will be. This one will be talking about pray for me, do this, do that. So we need to talk urgently. Really? Yeah. Amen. And for another 45 minutes, the plane was circling. And the crisis was getting bigger and bigger. Because the pilot came back and said, ah, why, why are you the, all the commotion? At least you know that the firefighters in Heathrow are very efficient. Firefighters. <laughs> After 45 minutes, when my daddy and I finished our conversation, the tire came out. But they, they didn't say for a mechanic, there's no mechanic who can, who can deal with the fact. You can have peace in the midst of a storm if you realize that God is with you. So you a second story. And we will pray. This time I was traveling by air also. This time I was in British Airways. <laughs> and we have settled down. 
about to eat and I was traveling economy this time. Because nobody bought the ticket. And as they served us food, those of you who have traveled before, you know the food they give you in economy is always very small. At least I was a young man, hungry young man. If served, said it, uh, gave us the little, little food they were going to give us, which we usually shock with uh, as much coke as possible. And the pilot made an announcement. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome aboard. Uh, the flight, our flight will be pretty smooth until we get to Heathrow, because at the time we'll be arriving, there's going to be a big storm uh, over there. But uh, don't worry, we will manage to land. As soon as he said that, the man who was sitting next to me froze. <laughs> we are flying to a storm. But I've been in a storm before. And I knew my daddy was with me. And I landed safely. So I enjoyed my food. When I finished it, this man wasn't touching his food at all. I looked at him, I said, sir, you are not eating. He was shocked. You mean you understand English? <laughs> I said, yes. You heard what the pilot said? I said, yes. He opened his mouth. So I said, I asked him again, you are not eating? He said, no. Can I? <laughs> so I took his food, enjoyed it, and fell asleep. When we got to eat through the pilot came back and said, ladies and gentlemen, the weather boys must have deceived us. The storm is going to be in Scotland, not in London. <laughs> so I look at my friend. And the two of us began to laugh. It's too late for him to take my food. I, his food is already gone. But he was so relieved that he was going to land without a storm. And then my father spoke to me and said, Son, the storm was coming to London. But because of you, I diverted it. Sooner or later, a storm will come. It's a matter of when, not if. He said, when you walk through the fire, when, it won't bore you. Not if. And even if we don't have physical storm, no financial storm, no marital storm, Sooner or later, it will be time to face death. And that's the biggest storm of all. But if the Lord is with you, you will have nothing to fear. That's why if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you are <laughs> playing with fire. Because if you wait till the storm comes before you begin to invite Jesus Christ in, it will be too late. But today, you can invite him into your life. And then it doesn't matter what is happening. You can have peace even in the midst of a storm. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, if you step forward to the altar now, we will pray for your salvation and then you can face the future with peace of mind. And I will count from one to five. After five, if you are not already standing here, we will know you are not coming. We will pray and continue with the rest of the service. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, please come now. He is the Prince of Peace. He's the one who can give you perfect peace.
perfect peace in your home, perfect peace in your place of work, perfect peace for the rest of your life. Come now, because sooner or later, the storm is coming, and it takes the Prince of Peace to give you permanent and perfect peace. I'm counting now one. Two. Three. And if you are backsliding, you better run back to Jesus because you never can tell when the storm will strike. Four. And if you say, ah, what will my friends say if they see me going forward when the storm comes? There will be no room for your friends to come and help. When the storm happened in the airplane, there was no one we could call to come and help. Four as the final countdown. So if you are coming, hurry up. And those of you already in front, talk to the Almighty God. Eh? Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. I surrender my life to you today. Come and take over. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. And the rest of us, please let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save the souls of these people. That God will give them genuine salvation. And that the Prince of Peace will continue to abide with them. Pray for them. And those of you on the way, hurry up because I'm about to pray for salvation now. Come very quickly. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, Prince of Peace, we bless your holy name. We thank you for your word. Thank you for all those who have come forward to surrender to you today. Please receive them. Have mercy on them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. As they have come to you today, please receive them. Let them become part of the family of God. From now on, any time they call on you for anything at all, please answer them by fire. So that from today onward, they will enjoy your peace. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I rejoice with those of you who have come forward. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Before the counselors will take you away to attend to you, I want you to join us in prayer. Uh, Is there anybody in church today who needs peace? If you need peace, stand on your feet and shout a big hallelujah. And lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, Prince of Peace, send peace into my life. Go ahead, talk to him. Send peace to my life. Peace in my body, peace in my family, peace in my finances. Send peace into my life. Prince of Peace, speak peace to me today.